here. What's going on, guys? What's going on? Welcome back for another episode of Cut to the Chase podcast with me, your friend, your confidant, Mr. Abel Chase. Abel, very, very happy that I am here today. I'm going to be honest with you guys. I'm very, very sore. Uh, I was doing jiu-jitsu yesterday, and today I'm, I'm paying for it, paying for it. This is when you know that you live in a city of people who don't care what you do on the train. I was doing hula hoop stretches on the platform for 15 minutes and no one looked at me. If anyone was hula hooping, doing stretches right next to me, I would look at them and and probably would instinctively say, who raised you? Shout out to TK, TK Kirkland. <laughs> I would literally look at them and be like, why are you hula hooping in public? Because you don't look, anyone who hula hoops, you know, when I'm referring to the hula hoop stretch, you know, the, you know, the hula hoop stretch guys where you're just twirling your hips around, you're just in a circular motion. I was doing that very, very aggressively because I had to warm up my hip flexors. Now, that was probably a lead in that probably wasn't needed. I could have chose a different lead in, but it is what it is. Um, drink water. Episode four, cut to the chase podcast. <laughs> Yeah, um, a lot of interesting news. Um, the royal family is in Boston, which is interesting. I don't know if you guys are into the royal family stuff. Um, I'm gonna talk to Nicky Neighborhoods in a little bit about that. I don't know, man. I gotta talk. I, he's a good person to talk to about this subject because something about the royal family, like I care about, but most of the time I don't give a shit. So I don't know. We're going to have to kind of unwrap and see what that is. I don't know if Nikki Neighborhoods will. Nikki will have some good point, talking points. I, that's, so we're going we're gonna to get into that in a little bit. Um, I would say a decent day. Didn't do nothing. I did all my laundry yesterday. This is the thing, guys. I think one of the key things to being successful for the week is try to prepare your clothes and have everything ready. I'm starting to get into a rhythm of being proactive with things I need to have. And I'm not going to lie. It feels pretty good. Stress levels go down a little bit. You know, I'm not always in a rush, you know, I've always been the type of person where I can take a shower, get ready within 15 minutes. You know, I always have that full metal jacket type of energy ready to go. If you know, that, hey, you know, Pearl Harbor's coming. You get ready. I have that energy. You know, sound the battleships. I have the get up from the bed quick, take a shower, get the hell out the house type of energy, you know. Now, But, uh, yeah, I'm being pretty good with that, being proactive. The next level that I want to get to, though, is meal prepping. Yeah. That's when you know you're starting to become an adult, when you meal prep. <laughs> I don't I've I've just never been a meal prepper, you know. Part of the reason is I just don't cook as much as I should. And yeah, that's a benchmark, guys, for me. Meal prep. Meal prep savagery. That's what I want to be. I want to be the best meal prepper in the country. You know? Where I have my meals scheduled out for three weeks in advance. No one can tell me nothing. <laughs> Carb week? Nope. Cutting down fight camp. Not, never never fought. Never had nothing. <laughs> never had a skin. <laughs> I mean, I, when I started first, you know, it's, when I first started doing jujitsu, you know, because you, know, you always have like this. Anytime an individual starts something new, there's always a beginning excitement to something new. So... I'm not going to lie. When I first started jujitsu, you know, I, st- I got into it really, really quickly. And maybe the vernacular that I was using or the verbiage I was using probably shouldn't have been used for a person who just just started like in a month, a month for a month or something. But I started saying words like, yeah, you know, yeah, we're, we are in fight camp. Yeah, we, you know, yeah, I got to I can't come to this uh, show because, you know. My gym, we're in fight camp. I used to say things like that. And then I said to myself, what are you talking about? 
What are you saying, you dumb friggin' goober chocolate head, friggin' round face, you you basketball Godiva chocolate, just trying to sound like you are part of the UFC. You you look like a cut man. At best, you fucking crappy. Ugh. So I just, I stopped, I stopped doing it, guys. I, st- I stopped lying to myself, and I just, now I'm back on normal mode. Now I'm back on just taking things as they are, you know. Because one day someone's going to say, oh, you're in fight camp? Yeah, let's, well, let's train together, and I'm going to have to step up, and, and, then, and then I'm not going to do well. <laughs> yeah, man, what, what, you know. We're in fight camp. What are you? What are you saying to yourself, Chase? Ugh. Anyways, pressure, guys. Don't fall into it. All right. Um, but yo, everything's been going good. I went to a show. I did. A, I did. A, I did a. Um, I did a spot in town that was good. Shout out to Andrew De La Volpe. Uh Good show going on on Tuesday nights at Bellingham Tavern down in Faneuil Hall in Boston, the famous Faneuil Hall. If you ever visiting boston guys you got to visit this area called faneuil hall it's where a lot of the old first time bars were i guess created or built because you know boston was the first city and um yeah it's pretty pretty old school nikki neighborhoods came down and actually got out the house and (sighs) we got nikki neighborhood out the house man came to a show nikki would you what how how did it feel to come out to a show again because it's been a little while. Yeah, it was it was nice. Yeah. Andrew's a nice guy. Yeah, he's a nice guy. Andrew's a super nice guy. Yeah. Puts on a good show. It was light. It was definitely a light show um, as far as, like, the attendance, like, the amount of people that were there. But I still think everyone put on a good... Yeah. Everyone put on a good show for, for the people yeah. that were there. Yeah. I think that's what it's all about. But, yeah. Those shows are good because those type of shows are good because they really... You know, you can work out new material. You can really have fun and be loose. And so those are the type of shows that really, if you do them consistently enough, they will really help a comedian build their time, you know? So, mm-hmm. yeah, it's interesting because I never used to be on shows like that. And you see now, you you know, when you, like, make certain, when you, when you grow, you kind of, you know, you at one point, you know, I was, I was just happy just to be on a show, mm-hmm. like any show. It didn't matter what it was. And then I was happy to be like a host on a show. Then, then there's levels and you're like, oh, once you get a host and you're like excited to get like a feature spot, you know, mm-hmm. so there's always like that next thing you always, there's always a thing you always reach for. And then when you start getting on shows, you start seeing like, oh man, I, wow, people are seeing, like watching me to do jokes. Mm-hmm. And then it's like, wow. <laughs> you know, it's sometimes dope. I remind myself, you know, that this is a cool thing to do, you know. But, yeah, I just, it was a cool spot, right? You you, you mentioned something about the bell in hand. Like, the, you, you're, you know, obviously you're into architecture and things. You, you like the aesthetics of the bell in hand. I remember you saying, like, the, oh, yeah. the look of it, right? Yeah, I mean, it's just an old spot. Like, that area is kind of cool. Like, yeah. like, I like when you go to, when you go to a bar that, I, I like old bars, you know, yeah. go to a bar to like drink or just hang out. Like, I don't want to go to some glass box, you know. Okay. I like a place with a little character, you know. It's right. like where they, it's like, I felt like the pilgrims would, would, would drink there. Right. Okay. You know, not great times for certain people, but so. definitely I think that it does, <laughs> I like history. Because um, right. I was going to say there weren't really... There was, let's say, some questionable talking points in those bar and, conversations. And let's be clear, there still are. Right. There's still are those same questionable talking points in certain bars of Boston. Yes. So. Yeah. But I thought I thought it was good. Um, it was good seeing all the comedians again. I was surprised that people recognized me and, and said hi to me. It was yeah, kind of that was kind of cool. cool. <laughs> yeah, I was surprised too. Chase was like, ugh. Nobody. You said something so funny. Someone was walking. I think it was one of the comics was walking. Mm. And you go, ugh. He's got that, I'm going to make it walk. <laughs> ugh. Hope. It's just. I'm going to make it. Yeah. Just, 
the yeah, bell in just, hand. It's no, some, it, sometimes, it's, um, you that, know, like, that's a good show. People should go out to that show. Yeah, it's a good show. It's a good show. It's right. It's right downtown. It starts at a good time. Yeah. Seven thirty start. It's good. It's good. Yeah, he's done some good things with that, Andrew. He's built that room up, and so yeah, Tuesday nights, seven thirty. Uh, every Tuesday, guys, go check it out if you're in the Boston area. I got listeners that listen to me, so you guys try to make out. I know it's a little hard during the week, but hey, it's telling me it's worth it. It's a free show. You know, f- seeing a live free comedy, you're not going to. There's, you just, there's nothing beats that. No. So um, try to make out to your local shows, you know, and um, have a good time. And uh, yeah, it was a cool time. It was a good, yeah, I did say that. I did say that. I said, yeah, you, he's walking. <laughs> Cause yeah, he just walked with a sense of like urgency that um, like a producer was going to walk in like Netflix is here. I'm going to show Netflix. Just, yeah. It was just, I used to do that at open mics all the time when I was bombing, I'd be like, Oh good. Netflix is here. Everyone would turn around. I'm like, Netflix is not here. No, Netflix will never be here. No, they wouldn't even stream here. For yeah. You. No, they, yes. They don't even, they don't get Netflix on the television. <laughs> Yeah. They can't afford the membership at this bar. This, <laughs> even if it was for, like, do you remember the days that Netflix, when they first started, I remember when I, I remember the times where Netflix, where they were actually sending you DVDs and you uh-huh. had to, it yes. was, it was DVD. Like I remember Redbox. It was a Redbox, I not Netflix. It was Redbox. And then did Redbox, Redbox yeah. turn into Netflix? think so yeah i still there still are some red boxes around i i if i had to guess i would say that there's a red box next to liquor world over in porter square okay off of mass ave yeah i feel like there's when near the burlington coat where the burlington co factory used to be in that little plaza oh yeah and that little that like little uh anything i think you feel like anything with a burlington co factory name <laughs> We'll have an, we'll have a red box next to it. Yeah, for sure. It, I don't know why. No question. It's like it's you know what it is. It's the combo plate for a suburb. Yeah. It's yeah. <laughs> people that, people that go to Burlington Co Factory also have still have a DVD player. And use it. Yo, my roommate, my roommate, he he has a like a not only does he have a DVD DVD player, he has like. The Pioneer Elite old school Blu-ray DVD yeah. player. So he's about quality DVD. Yeah. He said that to me the other night. He's like, I just, I just didn't buy any regular DVD player. I, I bought the best DVD player out there. Which is like the dumbest thing to do. Because, <laughs> yeah. I mean, at the time, I guess you could think of it like, I, I, I like people that respect quality. But, but electronics, electronics people are bizarre to me. They're just strange people. There's nothing bad, but it's just they're strange. People that are obsessed with like, mm-hmm. I got the I got a new Bluetooth earbud one. You know those it's, guys. It's a thing, man. It's the a, phones attached to their hip. Oh yeah, that was well. The, the did you ever do that? I, well, let me get into it. <laughs> Absolutely. What do you mean? Of course I did. <laughs> I <laughs> come on, man. The Netflix. I mean, uh, not the Netflix. The the, the next tells. <laughs> The flip up ones. Hey, you're up, Jay. Those are the best. Oh, I actually had one of those. I had a beep one. Yeah, the um, the next tells. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, through Sprint, it had the uh, the chirp MP3. There was an MP3 player on it. Yeah. Um, there's a bunch of shit. It was a, bunch that of was shit. a great flip phone. I remember Netflix when I'm mean, on Netflix. I keep saying Netflix, you idiot. Next tells. Next tells. I remember Next tells where there was a flip when they had the flip that came out. Because Nextels were originally weren't they were only for commercial use, they were only used Correct. for like, like for contractor union people. Correct. Because the frequency from them building scaffolds and whatever it was union like basically. I think because collar. they were so durable. It was durable, right? Yeah. And then they went into like making for like you know idiots like myself that would buy like you no know, like clear cases for them and shit. Like remember they had like different color cases for yeah, like yeah, Nextels, yeah. bro. The leather case had it. <sighs> That, that only came out when I wore my leather jacket. Of course. Of you course. know that. You know that. That's hysterical. I only use my leather case for my next telephone only when I wore my Wilson's leather jacket <sighs> that I bought at the Meadow Glen Mall in Medford. <laughs> the Meadow Glen Mall. Oh, no. I would go to the Arsenal Mall in Watertown. Oh, you dirty bitch. Yeah. yeah. 
where they had the Foot Locker uh, with the basketball court and the food pl- and the food hall. Dude, they had uh, you, or the whatever that was. You, you you would you do look like a dude that would shop at a mall that had a Coda in it. Yeah. Like a store <laughs> called Coda. Yeah, it's you, so true. Uh, expressions. Uh, I'm like, where would Will Smith shop? Dude, I bought a few of Wilson's leather jackets. Dude, that was a, that was a company that made a lot of money, man. You know, Wilson's leather jackets. I've never heard like Wilson like Wilson's leather jackets, man. Come on, they were all they were everywhere. They have a few, I think, still left. Oh, it was a store like called Wilson's Leather. They used to be the Cambridge Galleria. They used to be at all these malls. Yeah, <sighs> they. Used, you know what? The, you know what the Yes. Back when I okay, so check this out. Let me just say this for a second. If y'all don't know, y'all, yo, I got I got people's out there that are like they understand what Wilson's other jackets and all, some of you guys I know remember Wilson's other jackets because they used to make race car jackets. This is you. Oh yeah, that dude right there. The belt, the leather trench with the belt. I was a big, big leather leather jacket dude. Big leather jacket guy. Yeah, I used to actually, you know, wear. I used to have a beige one. It wasn't leather though, but it was more like a Colombo jacket. And my friends used to call me Colombo. That's hysterical. It was a Banana Republic jacket. Yo, I used to be a pretty boy, son. Banana Republic was. It, it still is. Banana Republic's expensive now. Oh, it's always was expensive. It's crazy. But they used to make better products when I used to be like when I used to wear them. Not because I just wore them, and I'm yeah. saying it was better, but I'm really. Like, you know, I actually would go every time we would go out every weekend to the club, I would get a shirt from a Banana Republic every Friday night. Yeah, that's you, amazing. You know, that was a, that was that was a North Shore thing to do. Yeah, that's another North shit, the North Shore thing that dudes used to do. If they go into the club the Friday night, they're going to the mall to buy a shirt that night. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I yeah, there's <laughs> and they're going to Marshall's. My was a big I was the Marshall. I, I go, OK, well, getting another getting another Ralph Lauren button down. <laughs> going to Marshalls, see what they have, and maybe Marshall. a David Wells jersey. I, I, yo, you could always get jerseys at Marshalls. Jerseys, yep. Marshalls is my shit. Marshalls, TJ Maxx, some TJ Maxx's, but Marshalls is my is my joint. You know, I'm just, tra- you know what it is, too. As I'm getting older, I just, I'm just finding clothes that are like more comfortable, but quality, comfortable clothes. Yeah. Yeah, that's like a new area that I'm trying to break into, you know. Comfort, yeah. Comfort, yeah. The f- <laughs> so you, so after the show, right, me, you were like, hey, I'm hungry. I remember you saying, yo, I'm hungry. I was like, yo, I remember the spot that you took us last, that you took me to before that Celtics game. Mm-hmm. Tavern in the Square. I mean, yeah. we went there again and, yo. Classic spot. Customer service. Please, yo, remember the host, so, bro? So Tavern in the Square, it's not quite fine dining. It, it, it's a sports bar, obviously. So you get that vibe when you go in there. The music's blasting, and it's like Jason Derulo almost exclusively. Wait, wow! Jason Derulo has like a residency at Tavern in the Square, but the, but through the stereo. That's you're right. I'll, yeah, you're right. J, it does have, give off a very Jason Derulo vibe. Yeah, a lot Neo. Of, a lot of lot of lot of yeah. A lot of white girls that like like black men. Yeah. Yes, yes. Like like black dudes who like want to find like white women who look like white women. Yeah. They and would, not like, they'll go to tavern and, and not like Jason Tatum. Like these girls are wearing like Marcus Smart jerseys. Yeah, that's yeah. the you yeah, know they're, they're like rigid. Yeah, <laughs> so true. Rigid men. Let's like, we'll just yeah. say <laughs> they're sturdy. They're like a sturdy guy, <laughs> but it's also a place where like trashy. Not to say that you're trash if you like hockey, but you kind of are a little trash if you like hockey. <laughs> well, there's a little element of that in there, which I don't. I don't think you should. You know, you're. It's a little trashy. It's kind of a trashy sport. Okay. Anything that anything that has fighting in it built in, yeah. and people don't have teeth. There's a little bit of trash there. Listen, it's. I listen. I'm all I'm saying is the wings are fantastic. I'm sorry. So the so yeah so. <laughs> So you were like, oh, we should go to that place. And in the back of my head, I'm like, they really just do a good Greek sa- a Greek salad. 
They do. And I'm obsessed with the Greek salad. So we so we went and we you got, got a, the... Nah, you got a fish, though. You got salmon, too. I got salmon on top of it, and it was not very good. Okay. Not yeah. as good as last time. No, 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 no. Okay. S- salmon shouldn't be taste like fish. And it tasted a little fishy. Gotcha. So that's so that's why I didn't really eat as remember, much of it. I'll but, remember that. Yeah, but it's a great bumper sticker. Salmon shouldn't taste like fish. Salmon shouldn't smell like fish. <laughs> fish technically shouldn't smell like fish. Well, we should have. You should have been telling yeah, me that <laughs> a few, a few when you were at uh, when you were at what was that restaurant that your parents brought you to? <laughs> the black and pussy broke cat. Broke your heart. What's the place? That, the, the black pussy cat? No, 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 no. <laughs> the place in fucking Route One, the Asian. Oh my goodness! Yeah. <laughs> I should have told you that when you were at um, uh, what the fuck was the name of it? Fantasy Island. Fantasy Island. <laughs> you bitch! You know you you know you just wanted me to say it <laughs> to bring me back to my oh, Fantasy Island. <sighs> but this place is better than Fantasy Islands. Listen. It's gonna have to top Fantasy Island, you know. Fantasy Island was was a was a is a huge staple in my life. Uh know? yeah, absolutely, as uh, it should be. But yeah, but man, let me. You know, we were we were kicking it, eating that food. We fucking we had some good food. That place has some good food, man. I gotta get yeah. back there. I might go there after this, actually. To be uh, honest with you, um, because it's right down the street where I have to catch my bus to go home. All the way down there. Yeah, yeah. I pay. I get the bus from Haymarket. Oh yeah. And then, you know, it's right next door. You, know? you asked me after we, and I should have done this, by the way, when we li- were leaving, we're, it's that like parting of ways. And you're like, okay, well, I'm going to go catch the Haymarket thing over to wherever. And he's like, and, and Chase goes, you could take this to Park Street. And then Park Street will get you to the back bay. Right. And I was like, yeah, no, that doesn't sound fun. But I should have because I got an Uber driver who told me that he was in rehab and he's from Worcester and I was in the car with him for over a half an hour to get less than like to like a mile, two miles. Right. Uh, and it was a fucking nightmare. So I should have just taken the train. With you should you. have taken the train. Yeah. Yeah. Because those are like those hours of operation for Ubers. You only get the crazy drivers mm-hmm. because only crazy drivers would operate during tr- rush hour traffic. Correct. So you're going to get crazy people because mm-hmm. they want the money. Absolutely. He's like, how do I get back to, he was, at, he was actually Puerto, I think he was Puerto Rican, he had a Puerto Rican flag. He was oh. telling me, or Costa, Costa Rican. Wait, wait, the, that's fucking hilarious what you just said. What? You were like, I think he was Puerto Rican, wait, Puerto Rican flag. Wait, okay, yeah. The, you instinctively went to like the Puerto Rican flag because I'm like picturing a Puerto Rican flag hanging. It was. from, But the, the second thing that you didn't think of to, to make you think he was Puerto Rican wasn't like anything physical. It was like the flag hanging yeah. from the car. Like usually people are like, oh, I think he's Puerto Rican. He, he looks Puerto he Rican. He looks Puerto Rican. Yeah. He's, you know, he has, you know, he looked like, you know, uh, whatever, Mark Anthony a little bit. He got bit. in an accident while we were driving. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's got a leather jacket on. Yeah. With a screwdriver in it. It's, it's you know, <laughs> all those things you could have, you know. He looked like El DeBarge. <laughs> like, El DeBarge. Any of those things would have, like, but you essentially yes. was like a Puerto Rican flag. <laughs> like Correct. <laughs> Correct. That's not so. Yes. And so he, um, the fuck was I trying to say? <laughs> you know, one of those people that, you know, when you're with someone and they're being kind to you. And they're genuinely just talking with you and they're interested in the conversation. But they mention certain things along the way in the conversation that leads you to believe that this person could turn on a dime. And he's just a very, and he was like very unstable. That's happened. That happened the whole ride. He'd be like, yeah, you know, these bikes, I'd ride my bike all the time before I had to go to rehab. Oh, man. Yeah, I was in a. Love the love the city. So you're from Boston. I was like in and around the area. Yeah, I, I kind of grew up in and out in and out of Boston. And he right. he was like, yeah, no, absolutely. Did you live in Saudi? And I was like, yeah, actually, I did live in Saudi. I lived in Andrews Square. And he's like, oh man, I used to always get in fights with kids at rehab from Saudi. Oh yeah. And I was like, so you got that guy? Oh, this motherfucker. I know. Wait, let me let me explain to you. I already know the type of Uber driver that you had. Yeah. You got the Uber driver where he just got out of rehab. He needs to make money, but he can't actually get a real job because he has felonies. So he can't get a real good paying job, unfortunately. Right? 
Well, maybe not unfortunate. Maybe kill the guy. I don't know. Not judging. But <laughs> but the guy needs- Chase here is the last thing. He goes, Man, I'm so fucking tired. I got can I get back to route how do I get on Route Nine? How do I do this? Am I taking the right turn? Da da da. And then he goes, I got court tomorrow morning, and I'm like, Bo, there it is. There it is. There it is. You do have court in the morning. And I wish you luck because you seem like a very nice guy. And he, he doesn't have court in the city. No. no he's got court out in Worcester for it, sure. No, he's, no, he is going to Plymouth County. He's, yeah. got, he's got court in Plymouth. Like, because he committed a, a crime in Brockton. No, Rockland. Yeah. <laughs> he's, he's a Rockland kid yeah. guy. He's, he was doing something at the Marriott in, Rock, in Rockland. Yeah, it's called fentanyl. That you, that you shouldn't, that he shouldn't have been doing. It's called fentanyl. Nonviolent crime. Misdemeanor. Misdemeanor. $250 fine. Yeah. Maybe 30 days in jail. He but. was driving a beautiful Lexus. I'm back into Lexuses now. I well, like I like Lexuses. Oh yeah, Lexus, Lexus, Lexus are are kind of one of those like expensive but inexpensive cars that will last you good quality. I really would like to probably I would like to get one of the Lexus ES three fifties. Those are nice. Yeah. You know what the fuck am I talking about? I always talk about when I have money, I'm going to get this car. You know, Chase, you need a Honda Civic, okay? Yeah. Just everybody does. I feel like everybody needs a Honda Civic. I agree with you. I think everyone needs like either one really good efficient car, fuel efficient for sure. You feel me? Yeah. Um, but anyways, um, can you believe this, Nick? It is like four more weeks to end of the year. Like, no. You know what I mean? There's one more month and we're done with 2022. Yeah, you know, every, everyone says this. Yeah, I can't believe it. Yeah, you can't believe it. I right. can. Yeah, time is. I, I I understand time. <laughs> right. You know how some people. It's not a bad thing, but like, my mom will say that shit all the time. She's like, I can't. I can't. She says can't because she's from Boston. She, I can't believe that you're already thirty years old. And I'm like, I'm thirty four, mom, and I'm about to turn thirty five. And she's like, I just don't understand where the time went. And I'm like, Yeah, I guess. Well, I guess. It just happens. It's happening now. <laughs> it's, well, I think it's one of those things that people just, it's a, it's an easy talking point, like small talk talking point to get into like what they really want to tell you, which is she never really wanted you in the first place. Probably <laughs> like, <laughs> like she reversely wants the times you to be younger. Cause those are the better times. Like, <laughs> so true. <laughs> I um she 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 works off nostalgia. Oh yeah. Like a like a there's a there's a furnace in her deep in her soul and it has to you fill it with nostalgia. You know who I feel like your mom reminds me of, but I never met your mom. Just the sound of it. Yeah, she reminds me of like I feel like Kirsty Allen. Do you remember that uh, the actress Kirsty Allen? She played the um she was co-starred in the movie um, with uh, John Travolta. Oh, this is hysterical. Curse the alley. I'm sorry. Kind, kind of. My mom <laughs> is more like... Um, Ozzy Osbourne's wife? No, my mom is more... She, I, I, can't, I don't know who she looks like. I couldn't, I couldn't describe... I feel like I want your mom to look like Ozzy Osbourne's wife. That's hysterical, yeah. No, she's <laughs> more... She's like Carmela Soprano. I was gonna, if you were gonna say Carmel Anthony, I'd be like that would have. We would have had a. <laughs> she acts like very Carmela Soprano ish, uh, so but she, so she's definitely Sicilian. She's Italian and Irish, so she's a hundred percent. You know why? See, this is when I know she's you're you're 100%. Italian because you didn't even say no. You were like, because I said she's probably Sicilian. You're like, no, she's Italian. So you guys don't think Sicilians are Italians? They're not. Nick, I got a lot of Italian. Sicilians are not Italian. Nick. This is a bit that I have. This is Nick. a joke that I have. Sicilians are the android version of Italians. I don't want to get canceled, Nick. You they bet. aren't Italians. Jesus. It's another country. Sicily's another country, I think. <laughs> Hold on. One second here. Let's look this up. I, well, you, you look up you know, your own demise while I apologize to the listeners. Now, guys, I Sicilians, I'm with you because, you know, I felt like Nick. I didn't want to bring it up. Nikki, Nikki didn't acknowledge that you guys are Italian. I want to figure this out. 
Why does Sicily? Why is Sicily not recognized? Oh as my Italian god! People? Wait, am I fucking? Hold on. Sicily is Sis- Sicily its own country. Wow. Sicily, Italy, Sicilia Island is the largest and one of the most densely populated islands. Mm-hmm. Great. Sicily forms an autonomous region of Italy. Yeah, so it is part of Italy. Okay. Yeah. All right. But they're still not Italians. They're a different... Sicilians are a different breed of Italians. That's maybe a better way to put it. All right. Not all Italians. Like, everyone thinks that, like, oh, you know, the mafia. It's like, no, you don't know what you're talking about. When it's Sicilians, Mm -hmm. there's crime and gambling in their blood. Oh, so you pretty much are oh, so. Oh, so he basically was your taxi driver, the taxi driver from earlier, the Uber driver. From oh no, 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 he was Puerto Rican. Although maybe he could, maybe he was part Sicilian. Maybe there was some Sicilian in there. <laughs> Who knows? I know for Puerto Rican, for, for a few Puerto Ricans, they're you know they're a little rigid as well. Well. <laughs> I love how you use rigid now. <laughs> That's my pause. This is what I'm doing. Yeah, definitely say pause. Um, yeah, rigid. I'm, 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 I'm inputting. I'm substituting rigid with like things because it's. Uh, but I love them. I love. I love Sicilians <laughs> because I'll tell you right now they they know how to cook, and if they don't know how to cook, they know where to eat. Okay. Okay. They they're. Once once they trust you, they're the most hospitable people. I fuck with Sicilians. Right? Yeah. Those are my peoples. Yo, you know what I had the other day that was bad bomb? Banana bread, son. Yeah. You into banana bread? I was really heavy into banana bread my junior and senior year of high school. My my One of my very close friends' mom made banana bread with <laughs> sugar on top. <laughs> you know what the fuck I just realized what? about you? You fucking... You... This... You kind of had like like me a little bit where it's like you have a story for like everything. Yes. You know, like you, I just simply was like, hey, you ever had banana bread? You could have been like, yeah, man, I fucking love banana bread. And just like just deaded it. You 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 had to come up with like a memory. <laughs> and you had to like tell me. That Shout story. out to Tyler Carroll's mom. She made the best. She would bring it in. It was like cocaine. She'd bring it in in tinfoil. And we would all, um, you know, we would. Uh, it was, she was famous for her banana bread. It was oh. fucking delicious. Dude, it's, deli- it's it's delicious. Dude, banana bread. Oh, I love me some banana bread, bro. I love me some. Wa- you like it warm or toasted? Or warm in like room temperature? I I kind of like everything room temperature, but no, I, I with a little cream cheese on it. Do you ever have it with cream cheese no, on never, it? No. Nah, what, what's that about? Cream cheese? Yeah. It's very difficult to do because the banana bread has to be the cream cheese has to be a little melty, like a little little warm, like warmed up, or else cut. it'll cut right through the banana bread. But it is something else. Can I be honest with you, bro? Please do. I ordered Uber Eats last night. Okay, I like where this is going. For McDonald's, I spent fifty three dollars. Because I was, I smoked this joint that had keef in it, so it was wrapped up in oh, keef. Oh, God. And I've never been so hungry in my life. I ordered a $53 meal from McDonald's. A $53 meal? Yes. Half of them were desserts. Ugh. Large vanilla milkshake. Come on. Caramel sundae. Come on, dude. Fifty three dollars. You could have got a real a meal. double cheeseburger. Okay. Okay. Because the order was over twenty dollars, I got twenty piece nuggets for free. So I took that. Wow, McDonald's is giving out twenty piece chicken nuggets for people that spend over a certain dollar amount. Yep, Uber Eats. Guys, you can thank me later. Don't don't do it. If you're out there listening, don't do this to yourself. This flies in the face of everything we were talking about earlier. We're gonna get into <laughs> health. Health. <laughs> yeah. No, don't do that, guys. But sometimes I do it because I'm just an idiot and uh, don't have any discipline. So, but it was fantastic at the moment, and um, 
Yeah, that's anything why. That's, and that's why I have to go to jujitsu later to burn off those calories. Did you get anything else? Oh, of course I did. Yeah, I Wait. didn't stop. Are you a double cheese? You're a double cheeseburger guy. Yes. Okay. Yeah, I've double cheeseburger for sure. Um, sometimes I do quarter pounder. You do the chicken? Oh, quarter pounder. Quarter yeah. pounder, son. I rarely do chicken at McDonald's. <sighs> rarely do yeah. chicken at McDonald's. If I do, listen, I'll do chicken once in a while. If I really want to go hard and go home, son, I'm going to Wendy's. Straight up. Yeah. I'm doing it Wendy's. If I yeah, if I have to get if I'm if I'm getting fast food, which is maybe once every two or three years, I'd, I I like um. I like a Wendy's chicken sandwich, Wendy's spicy yeah, chicken sandwich. Wendy's spicy chicken sandwich. Wendy's is better, in my opinion, but whatever. McDonald's definitely serves its purpose for sure. I'll too. also fuck with McDonald's for sure if, you know. I'm a big chocolate frosty dude. I've talked about this before. Big. I just love sweets. I don't think I'll ever give up sweets, but I just I have to just limit my sweets, my sweet tooth. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I fucking love fucking ice cream, bro. You know what you would love? What, what's your favorite cookie? Chocolate chip? Uh, yeah, chocolate chip, um, warm, yeah. oven baked. I'm going to have my wife make you some of her gluten-free. L- hear me out. Hear me out. It's three ingredients in the chocolate chip, and it's fucking delicious. And it's yeah, better. chocolate chip, fucking sugar. Cho- and- <laughs> That's what chocolate chip, no sugar. Out. Maple syrup. Uh, and then like a special kind of uh, dough that she uses that doesn't have any like chemicals in it or whatever the fuck they use nick i just want to they are i just want to tell you something that, absolutely delicious that the, if that was your fucking pitch to have me eat these cookies that was the shittiest pitch that i've ever heard about. what the fuck pitch was that you said she makes excellent gluten-free cookies and you saw my face and i was like yo and you were like hear me out which i did <laughs> which I, and then you which i did and then you proceeded to explain to me three ingredients and that would have changed my mind about my initial thought process of this fucking gluten-free cookie Love that it. would never never taste yes then you was like it has it has <laughs> you go <laughs> it has a dough that's like whatever like mysterious something something mm-hmm. a bunch of chemicals in it mm-hmm. then you said it was gluten-free no sugar mm-hmm and then you said the third thing, which I blocked out because the first two things fucking I was tapped out anyways. Uh huh. That pitch sucked. I would never eat that cookie the way you explained it to me. Okay. Picture a warm, sweet cookie. Chocolate chip cookie. Nothing different about this chocolate chip cookie. It's delicious. It is unctuous. It 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 reminds you of when you come home and your mom would have chocolate chip cookies, if she if that's something that she did, and it would it, it takes you back to it transports you to that. That's what this cookie is. Now, on top of that, Chase, I know you're into health. This is a gluten free. You must be saying to yourself, "Man, I could probably have three or four of those cookies, but it's probably not good. You know, it's probably loaded with sugar and gluten and all this other stuff. It's not. It's gluten free. Three ingredients. Taste exactly the same." And you feel great after eating it. Can I get a box of... That's... Yeah. Yes. That's how you sell a chocolate chip cookie. Especially to a black dude. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's... Should like, I, co- I should have code switched. You should, I'm just telling you. After hey, fucking, brother man. Uh, I got a cookie. Yeah. No. Never that. You're 50 episodes in too late. <laughs> Imagine if I just started talking differently 50 episodes in. <laughs> just be like, her cookie slaps, son. <laughs> I'm sorry, what? Wait, wait. Why are you talking like that? Why? Nah, he's, you can be like, he doesn't. You <laughs> no, know no, what I'm no. saying? No, no. Nah, I'll try it for sure. Listen, I'll try anything that tastes good, you know? Um, yeah. I'm, I'm a food foodie person for sure. Um, I can't wait to, you know, start incorporating salads into my diet. I just got to find the right salads to make. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. The the salads. Yeah. You, you, got, ne- you get excited. You huh? need. I, lo- I love salads. You get excited. I you, love salads. You, the, way, I, the way you looked at me was like, uh, yo. Chase, I love dinner. I really am a big dinner guy. I, I love the types of things you would eat at, at a dinner. Yeah. Uh, not always necessarily. So, but uh, my, my favorite meal of the day is lunch, mm-hmm. which is either a sandwich or a salad. And I could <laughs> eat that for the rest of my life. I told you this the other day. I, actually, I told you this last time. I don't think you remember, but 
you know, I was like, I think Nick, you, you sound like you finally found your, what you're comfortable with, you know, with certain things. Like you don't, like you know what your limit is. Oh yeah. And you know what like will satisfy you. Yeah. You have like, I noticed that about you. You, you know when to like leave when it's time is like mm-hmm. you need to leave you know like a good amount that's gonna like satisfy you you don't overindulge mm-hmm. you don't have those type of habits you know when to anymore yeah anymore right so and then i think i told you that you were like yeah yeah i did yeah it took, <laughs> it took me a long time but i i figured it out it did and I, even still like last night i was telling you i went out with my my friend and my wife and i went out with a, a close friend of ours and you know we we i i drank too much i had probably like to myself, probably two bottles of wine. Nice. Yeah, but it's those things that I indulge in now, and it's t- those. T- I only do that with friends. See, I think that's the thing is like I'm not, t- not. You know, you shouldn't have that much alcohol. <laughs> it's just not good. Right. But it was just such a fun time. You know what I mean? And it was like I like those moments where it's like, okay, this is, this is prime. I'm not gonna go have two bottles of wine at the Bell in Hand. You know no, what I mean? Like, no, I, I, I'm finally getting, I'm finally understanding how to pick those moments. Yeah. Be like, okay, this is a moment where, you know what? We're going to go, we're going to get a little drunk and, and then I, I won't touch alcohol now for another, like sure. two or three months. Yeah. It's like you found your balance. Yeah. It's good. It's important. It's important to have balance because it makes you appreciate other things. You know, it makes you appreciate the things that you, when you have it. Oh yeah. Yeah, for sure. I'm a big firm believer in that for sure. I think I found my balance too in most cases, but I'm searching for others as well. But yeah, it just it's very it's 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 kind of cool to see like where you can just go out with someone and like not have to worry about some craziness that's going to happen. <laughs> like I avo- I avoid it at all costs. I avoid <laughs> craziness at all costs. I mean, I could I could operate sometimes in like some controlled chaos, but Dude, I, I would party with some people, man, before, and it's like there was no limit. There was no shut-off clock. It was, you know, it was all night. It's like you have to tell them to leave, you know? Too much. After you went in, your bedroom came out in pajamas, too. Like, you gave, you started washing your dishes. Like, you give all the signs like you're about to go to bed, but they're still at your house. Yep. <laughs> it's like, yo, I'm washing my dishes at 4.30 in the morning. You no. think this is normal? No, no. I, out. I I need for you to leave. You need to go. You actually need to leave. Yeah. I, I yeah, I I think cuz I would just have so much fucking I would have so much fun. You know, I would just have so much fun going out and partying. And then um it's like it's it, it, then it's over. And then people are like, "Oh, I have other things that I want to do." Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like I can't be out the feeling I can't even tell you the feeling of waking up a majority of my Saturday and Sundays now not being hung over and just being able to go do whatever I want to do is like the greatest thing in the world. I love being an adult. Well, insert fucking Romeo and Juliet background music right now. Let's see. What do we have here? Jesus Christ. That you, was, no, but you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, hey, I do. That was fantastic. I fucking love being an adult. It's good. Well, I don't know. Here it is. Ready? Yeah. Mr. Fucking Clean. Mr. Fucking Goddamn Hide and Mighty. You you ended you ended the goddamn you know segment because that was that's what it was. That was a segment. That was a segment. He's like, I love being an adult. What's your favorite age? Hmm? What what was your favorite age, or what is your favorite age that you've been? Oh, my favorite age. Yeah. I would say probably um, my favorite age was was the age between like. <sighs> I would say like between like eight and like eleven or ten. That's a solid. Yeah, yeah. And then after that, it was Fantasy Island came, and it was like <sighs> fucking, you know. <laughs> then it was like a blockage from mentality. Then it was just like, okay, I'm just gonna do the things I like to do to keep my mind off the shit that I'm really thinking about. Yeah. And then I became really good at those things. Yeah. Like basketball, fucking yeah. sports, and sure. You know, first of all, the way you said sure. Yeah fucking 
I know I, this is some underlying Because I know how there. much you care about basketball. So for me to, that was intentional. I'm glad you caught it because I, I, I know how Secret much sense. you actually, it's, delu- I mean, it's delusional. There's no other word to describe it. What Think is? that you could pick up a 10 day contract with the NBA. That's how confident you are. So I, I wanted to just. Oh yeah. If I drop like another 40 pounds for yeah. sure. hundred percent. Which is again, it's just very interesting to me. I tweeted that. The other day, I tweeted that I said I, I was like I still I still have the confidence and believe that I can make the NBA. And instinctively, Sam J, the comedian, yeah. was re- retweeted. Was like, you can't. Yeah, I can love Sam J. <laughs> she, she, she just. And then I said something else. I was like, yeah, I just also want to be honest with you guys. I never really liked Hennessy, anyways. And she Did you and, never like Hennessy? and then she instinctively replied. And never liked you. Yeah. <laughs> That's good. So. You don't fuck with Hennessy? I will fuck with Hennessy probably. Ugh. The only way I can have Hennessy if it's on the rocks. Yeah. And, you know, it just, it gets me hot. Yeah. It gets me hot. Like yeah. Hennessy is like something. And I don't know. I've had bad experiences with Hennessy. You know, it's just, it's hot. I'd rather have a whiskey or a honey jack whiskey. Okay, yeah. I have I like honey I like honey jack whiskey now. Sweet. A little sweet. You like sweet, yeah. A little sweet. Yeah. I like mm. my shit a little sweet. Maybe I'll do like a splash of coke. That like dilute the oh, wow. Dilute the honey a little bit. You feel me? Yeah. Sp- you know, put a little tangerine in there. Uh huh. You know? And that's it. It's good to know. Good to know. So guys, cut to the chase podcast. <laughs> um <laughs> oh, hopefully right. you guys have more fucking enthusiasm. Listening to this podcast and Nick just fucking showed me with his face. Jesus. Oh man. <laughs> what do you, what you got going on the rest of the Blown week? Blown away with the fact that you don't like Hennessy. Um I really wanted that stereotype to be true. <laughs> I don't fuck with it. It's just too much. It's like if I didn't like cologne. I feel like Well I feel like I know. it's you know. No, I like that though. I like that because I mean I'll do like Remy Martin VSOP. Okay. I don't know what that stuff tastes like. I, I, I'm sure I've had it. I, I absolutely have had it before because in you the guys, past. I don't, think, I, don't think, I don't think you guys like cognac. No, I was never, never a big cognac guy. Yeah, cognac is more, I think, you know, it's like hard. Brown. It's brown, yeah. E&J brand. Well, actually, let me take that back. You, you, you used to fuck with E&J yes, brandy. Yes, I used to fuck with the E&J brandy hard. I know you did. You mix it with a little Coke, and it was nice and sweet, and it had like that kind of sweet and burning. Yeah, Nick, don't fucking bullshit. Bro. Okay, so this maybe- is, This is where you're- Hold on. This is where you're fucking- I'm going to bring you back. This was yeah. your fucking Fat Farm G-Unit day. Yeah. <laughs> it was so true. I had moved on, though. No, no, no. I had moved on. At that point, I was in my Russell Simmons uh, button-down- Baseball hat and, uh, you know, jeans. Oh, you thought you were Rockefeller? Oh, my God. Like one of the, ba- one of the fucking... His- the street- I'm like, I could work at the label. I could work there. Ugh, you walked around like the fucking head of the street team? Yeah. <laughs> the gorilla, the head of gorilla marketing. Oh, you're, yeah, you were just the street team. For- All right, guys, here we go. We're going we're gonna to paper the tunnel. You guys know where talk the tunnel to is? Talk to, talk to Nikki. Yeah. Talk- Nick Nick knows. Do you guys know where the tunnel is? Yes, we you know do, where the tunnel is. Bro, you definitely could have like been the illest, the illest, like, like, you know, regional street team director. Yeah, for like that. Bad Jam. boys. Yeah, yeah, hundred <laughs> percent bad. Boys. And then you worked your way up. Now you're like the CEO of Revolt. Yeah. <laughs> You'd be like, how this guy it's Nick so knows true. so much about black culture? What the fuck is his deal? You're the Lear Cohen of the Leb- Lebanese. He's, <laughs> he's been a bad boy street team uh, VP since he was 13 years old. That's that's how. He Lear Cohen, right, is an interesting character because mm-hmm. he is. Talk about it. You know, he's he was asked a question, right? This actually was um, asked on the Breakfast Club about him kind of being. I guess in the position of power where he, a lot of people felt like he exploited, you know, uh-huh. um, you know, pretty much like rappers that, 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 that way of music for him to make a lot of money. Right. Uh huh. And he was asked a question. He said, you know, you know, do you feel that way? And he said, 
how he looks at it, he looks at it, would you take opportunity over, um, would you take opportunity over, actually, can we pull it up on YouTube? Yeah. I want to, yeah. Oh, it was Charlemagne asking this, right? It was Charlemagne the God that asked him that. Fucking love Charlemagne. I don't know if I love Charlemagne. I don't. For, I think it's because his first name annoys me because it, it reminds me of Marmalade. That's hysterical. But I, Charlemagne, I fuck with you on other shit. But you, you just name reminds me of Marmalade, and I don't. I don't eat Marmalade. How? So basically, it was opportunity. Why? Yeah, that's the, right there. Yep. Okay, hold if, on. I, I gotta make sure that this is connected for sure. Uh, oh yeah, or you know, maybe we can play it here. Basically, this is a um, particularly on women guys that. But I think Leo Cohen on the Breakfast the Club explaining why he promotes dr- drug culture and rap music. I don't know what's and I thought this, this was interesting. Thing, man, is, is well, being a because it touched on back then. Being a how I guess cool. now people they, they of, like they're, they're making it cool in business at like high levels who make decisions to yeah to to green light you know certain things. This is how they he oh well, I guess this is how he views it. And I'm sure a lot of people would see it the same way. So, Well, I think the thing with him that is all those guys were doing it with those 360 deals. That's why people think that he's kind of like a culture vulture. Or one of the reasons maybe someone could say he is profiting off of black culture is because he fucking signed someone and is like, okay, Chase, assuming you know it. If people don't know what a 360 deal is, I, I look it up. I don't know the specifics, but I think it's, Anything you do, I get a piece of. Whether I, you know, yeah, you 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 decide you want to do another podcast under this. Basically, it's the label or the whatever, like pretty much taps into your publishing. They tap into your merch, they tap everything, into your touring. Yeah. So he yeah. was making. They own your your likening, likeliness, basically. Your likeness, yeah, yeah, and your and your masters. Yeah. Yeah. So like, sure. That's why I think he's. But Fine. hey. I want to listen to it. Can we pull it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's the most dangerous. It's the most dangerous thing from the beginning. that's facing um, yeah, um, yeah. our society. Are you so, so why sign an artist that would promote that? I think this is actually a different. Um, is this the is this the clip that you were that you were looking at? Or yeah, can you just play it? Yeah, yeah, let me, yeah, let me just I'll hear it and I'll tell you. Yeah, I gotta get some headphones. I had I should have bought them on Black Friday. Just bring the ones you have. Really yeah, rough, right. particularly on women. But I think it helped change the course of the crack epidemic. I don't know what's this opioid thing, man. Is is well, being a so crackhead wasn't cool you, back then. Being what? a crackhead wasn't cool. Now it's it. They seem like they're they're making it cool to be drinking lean and syrup and. It's the most dangerous. It's the most dangerous and... thing that's facing, um, um, our society. Are you so, so why sign an artist that would promote that? Um, b- because I, I, I already answered that question. You weren't paying attention. Um, she asked me talent or issues and I said talent, but I, I, I have to, I, I can't give up on people. But I'm saying that's hypocritical though. You're saying um, it's opportunistic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I got, I got people to feed. <laughs> um, oh, I got a, bu- I got a, I got a business to run. <laughs> You're going to make Dame Dash take this clip and call you a culture vulture. Who's Dame Dash? You brought him up. I don't even know him. I don't even know him. So you bring him his name up. I don't even know him. So y'all made a lot of money together. Made a lot of Come money. Come on, Leo. Don't do that to him. I don't know him. I really don't. So um I don't know what to tell you. I won't Interesting. Yep. So basically, the 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 two mat the subjects that he like thinks about when he is talent or issues, you know, he looks at it from like talent. Is he picking talent over issues? And he says he's picking talent because from his point of view, he's looking at it like, listen, I can't. I'm not an individual that is. And I don't want to put words in his mouth, but I'm just, I'm probably thinking if I was in his shoes, maybe I would be thinking like this. I can't individually be responsible to be the one to um, 
make things better for certain groups of people or Mm -hmm. you know i have to you know those are have to be um those have to be up to the people who want to who want to who want to who are who those issues are affecting they have to be responsible to try to create you know but then i can also see the other side where people like well you know you're you're not really helping it you're kind of enabling it by you know licensing this to be out in the world like this so that there's always been like that thing where it's art over you know consciousness consciousness over art you know i never from a business standpoint i understand what he's saying um i don't know what you thought i don't know what you think about that or I, if you ever think about i mean that no that i do i do frequently i watch a lot of his stuff and like a, a lot of the i used to watch a lot of the breakfast club i mean i think he i think people feel a certain way certainly because like Anytime, like a a white old white guy is profiting off of so significantly off of like predominantly black talent, it's gone on for like you know fifty, sixty, seven. I mean, it's always it's always been that dynamic. I think that's why it's a little kind of like is he taking advantage of kids in situations where it's like this eighteen year old kid is like not. Nah. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? Like, of course. So I think there's that. Yeah. But then I also think like at the end of the day, like this is life. Like this is the shit that happens in capitalism. Like it's about educating people about that. And I think a lot of people mm. recently have been, and they're like, I'll just go make my own music. Yeah. And you don't need Lee or Cohen anymore. Yeah. You don't need that guy, like that setup anymore. Yeah. Uh, because you can promote yourself. I mean, I don't know. The issues like people are gonna people can talk about yeah, what they want in in, sure, in yeah. music. Like. Yeah, yeah. I get it. It's just interesting. I want to hear your point on it. You know. He's got nice suits. He knows how to. He knows how to wear a suit. Listen, he's. I like that. I, I, you know. It's can't get. Not everyone's gonna. This is what I think people need to understand, and we'll we'll kind of lead with this: that once people start realizing that they're you cannot control, not everyone's going to share the same ideas, values, morals. They're not going to share the same things as you. you no. Know? Also, nobody's so, going to look out for you. And yeah, no, yeah, of course, no, no one's going to look out. No for one's going to look out for you. You know, it's just. Yeah, it just was interesting. I saw that and I was like, oh, let me kind of figure, you know, talk about this for a second, you know. Um, I like what you said. For me, about- it's like I like to think of it. For me, it's like that's what I decided to do. I started, I decided like I need to start doing stuff my own. Yeah. I got to start doing things of my own and try to cultivate my shit because I can't follow anyone else, you know, like, and I'm not going to. And for me, I'm, and that's it. And you make the decisions and you have to live by those decisions, you know, and, and who knows what, what people really, really feel inside. You don't know, you know, yeah, you don't know, but I, um, I mean, if Lear Cohen came to this podcast, it's like, Hey, you know, I'll give you, you know, a $2 million podcast deal. Listen, Nikki, we're done. We're signing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we're we're sure. signing because why not? I've been grinding for a long time. Sure. And yeah, I feel like you would, I feel like the temptation would be, here's the conversation we would have. Here's the exact conversation that you and I would have. If Lior Cohn offered us a $2 million podcast deal. Yep. I think you would have already signed the contract. In my head. hundred <laughs> percent. You would present this to me several days after it was presented to you. Not because you were trying to hide the, mm-hmm. the deal because you just forgot or or like just like had other things to do yeah yeah the, the ball's on me the ball yeah the, <laughs> the ball has been in your court the things on my plate the ball has been in your court for like a week and you're like oh by the way um i'm on a like a, there's a 24 hour decision that we're gonna have to make. yeah yeah nikki what do you think <laughs> I'd, I'd say this i would say two, two million's not enough yeah i would say we yeah. would have and to, that's and that's what i would be like you're fired because I would go back to them and say, hey, listen, my guy said like two minutes, not enough. And they said, well, it, there's nothing then. And yeah. then I'm going to be like, well, I, I don't really believe him anyways. So I just want to let you know that he was fired before yeah. I came here. But I wouldn't have been a great businessman if I didn't tell you what he thought. I just want to let you know that I fired him before yeah. I came here. I don't agree with him if they were like, we don't have nothing. But if they were like, oh, that makes sense because we do feel like you're with more. So would he do four million? I'd be like, he's a great guy. So yeah. that's why he's on my team. You go where the money is. <laughs> 
You go where the money is. <laughs> I would take $2 million and not even look back. Yeah. You know, everyone talks about it, but like, you know, you do. I think so I'm, at the age, I'm at the age of lump sums. Here's that's good. That's funny. Um, you gotta you gotta educate yourself and do the due due diligence because in your not you but I'm just saying in general people need to educate themselves on shit before yeah. they sign it like you know staying on the Lee or Conte like yeah man you wave a million dollars in front of someone they don't understand that that's literally a loan that you have to pay back to the label yeah and and they, because they're looking they got to recruit those yes um, anybody gives you something they're gonna have to make three or four times. That that, so if he if he if he gave us two million dollars, I'm like oh oh so he's gonna make five million dollars or six million dollars off of this, right? So and I would probably yeah. and then I would have to ask for at least ten, oh, yeah, and that's where the deal goes down because I now I'm just reaching for the stars. That's what's stupid. See, I can't you know. See, guys, this is what you get on Cut to the Chase podcast. You get business, yeah. You know, I guess this is like a master class. I would say more of an undergraduate <laughs> exploratory an option. Why go to business school? You yeah. Could listen to the cut to the chase podcast. Yeah. Come to cut to the chase podcast to get all your business education. No, just come to the podcast to just listen to some, some guys talk about stuff that they kind of know things about, but not really. It's us reading off a computer. Basically, it's a, which is a great computer, by the way. <laughs> oh man what a great podcast i love doing this podcast um definitely got some guests coming up so that's going to be interesting we're going to have fun with that uh, guys always tune in subscribe like and share uh, guys were reaching out to me over the weekend some of you guys were saying you listen to the podcast but you know give it a share uh, subscribe on youtube we have spotify um, apple we're all we can get all podcasts definitely share the podcast um, got some shows coming up. I got some shows coming up in December um, down the Cape, which is going to be cool. Um, and I have uh, one date in January. I will be at the Comedy Connection January 19th to the 21st. Uh, Rhode Island coming for you. Going back home. Strip clubs, baby. Daddy's making a pit stop. Oh, God. No, I'm not. No, so I'm not. That's ill-advised. I that's, can't advise on that. Yeah, that's not good. No, I'm a different man. I'm a different man, guys. <laughs> Maybe for uh, uh, some like wings or something. Stop in. I mean, buffet. Just, just wanted, yeah, you know. So, um, yeah, you're right. So, I will be stopping at the White Zebra. Yeah. <laughs> of all the names, I'll be stopping at the White Zebra, the Cadillac Lounge, <laughs> before my before my shows. Yes, guys. Thank you very much. Always, I'm at Chase Able on Instagram, uh, at Chase Able underscore comedian on TikTok, and YouTube, Chase Able. Nick, what you got? Look it up at Nicky Neighborhoods. Like, follow, subscribe. Easy. Dundo. Bumble clap. <laughs>